Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. It's actually going to be a mini shadow work practice slash reading. So if that doesn't feel like your vibe, then this may not be the right reading for you, but we're going to get some opening messages, see what is coming through for us to kind of bring a bit more awareness to what shadows might be present for you, what you might need to be working on, what sort of energy is trying to bring your focus and attention to. However, this reading wants to come through. I'm also just being guided to actually pause the recording for a moment to get one other deck ready. Okay, so let's dive into this reading, this practice. We're going to be looking out for shadow work today. So what do we need to see? What is our opening energy here for shadow work specifically? We have create boundaries is our opening first. Actually, we're going to get two of these. Let's go with two. Not being guided to do three. We're going to go... Two opening messages and temper your criticism. Interesting opening messages there. So for anyone who is feeling like your boundaries are a little bit, I want to say a little bit weaker than they need to be, um, the, the, the phrasing is lackluster. So boundaries feel a bit lackluster. And it could be coming through in that phrasing because I always talk about boundaries being a malleable energy and we need to have some kind of ability to move around and move through boundaries so we don't create blocks or resistance so it feels almost like your boundaries need like a little bit of polishing a little bit of you know um, reinforcing a little bit of shining up maybe you have some leaks in your boundaries for some people I definitely feel like you have energetic leaks around you so maybe you have boundaries set up for certain people but you're not implementing them for others and you need to have those certain boundaries set up for everybody in your life that could be part of it but I do feel for some that your energy field is actually holding on to some leaks and some tears and also some um, negative threads and cords that are I want to say being projected towards you and this is kind of creating these energy leaks within your field and system. So if you don't have really strong energetic boundaries in place or if you are still allowing people to kind of breach that boundary, breach that energetic field, I feel like there's definitely some, some improvement to be made there. The other side of that is as well, if you don't have boundaries in place, you may need them. For some people, when you've been working with boundaries for a long time, this is where I personally sit, but again... I've, I've, someone has spoken to me about it once before when I said that I personally don't generally have many boundaries anymore, but this is in a way that I've worked with boundaries for years. The boundaries that I've become more masterful of, I don't really need them anymore as boundaries. To me, I just keep working on my own frequency. And when you work on your own frequency, boundaries become less needed because you just don't tolerate bullshit. You just don't tolerate that energy. So if you feel like maybe your boundaries have become a little bit weak, ask, do you feel like you need that still in place? Is that still an energy that is really present in your life? Do you need to reinforce that? Or are you kind of just not tolerating any of that bullshit anyway? So you're kind of evolving energetically, moving through what you need to move through. So take that as it connects for you for your opening message. And the other one is temper your criticism. This is for both other people and yourself. So what I'm actually hearing here is, yes, it's about the inner critic, but I want, so again, this is a practice. This isn't just a reading. So if this isn't your vibe, please just click off because I know not everybody will resonate with this. Not everybody is going to like this. And that is probably why you need it more because it will trigger you if you don't like it. But what I do know when I do shadow work readings, it's when I get the most negative comments and when I get the most dislikes on a video because people don't like it, it challenges. So I would just say if it's going to challenge you and you're not willing to look within, then please just jump off. It might not be the reading for you. But if you want to face these things and if you want to work deeper into your shadows, then this is how we go into it. So yes, we're looking at tempering criticism. And that inner critic is very, very strong and very loud. You know, all of us will go through that in our journey where that inner critic will start to, I want to, I want to say like wailing at us, like this wailing song. And wailing is in W-A-I-L, not W-H-A-L-E. But this wailing song is coming through and it's like this inner critic is this deep, deep wailing sound. But the message I'm receiving with this is to take those messages and see, are you projecting those out to anybody else in your life? For many people, and again, this is a very generalized statement from what I have 
understood about shadow work over the years of doing it with people is that we will project out, you know, that someone is mirroring back to me the, the voice that I personally have in myself. So let's just say rejection, it's a very easy wound to pick up. So if someone is rejecting on the external, the mirroring back to me that I'm somehow self-rejecting or I'm rejecting a part of my life or I'm rejecting a part of myself, that is how that mirroring energy can work. But the other side of it is that maybe you have become unaware or maybe you've become a little bit lapsed in how you are speaking about other people. Are you gossiping? Are you tearing down anyone else without noticing it and seeing it as, okay, am I also doing that to myself? Am I almost wanting to punish someone else because I'm punishing myself in some way? That's how this energy feels. So please take that as it's as it's connecting because obviously you can read this in a couple of different ways. But the message is, are you projecting your insecurities in some way out to other people? So even if it's too like silently or catching yourself as you say negative things on social media, like when you're scrolling on social media and you might judge someone, you're judging someone for something, pause and take a reflection to say, am I doing that to myself? How am I doing that to myself? How am I seeing that in my own life? Because this is how this energy feels. It's more about how you might be silently judging others because you're silently judging yourself. So less about how people are projecting that back to you in their in their way of doing it and more about how you are actually creating a self-projected mirror in some capacity. So please take that with the love that it is always intended. But I that's probably one of the... It kind of feels like a bit of a harder message to receive. I wouldn't want to receive that message, right? I wouldn't want to receive that and be like, oh, am I gossiping? I don't gossip, but when I'm scrolling sometimes, are there projections? possibly <laughs> always there's there's going to be some moments of projection um where we will be like oh i don't like that or oof you know and see catch it within yourself and see what you need to look at within so let's get some more messages this was the deck that i was guided to get very strongly so we will see what wants to come through I've only been guided to get one of these. Okay. So we have this energy of rediscovery coming through. And because this was such a strong message, I'm actually going to read the guidebook with this. So what do we have? Rediscovery. I'm going to read the earthly and the spiritual meaning in this particular card. It says, withdraw to the security of loved ones, stumbling on or triggering a memory. Stories told in safety. Ooh. I want to repeat that line. Stories told in safety. The stories we say, talk about in this criticism energy when no one can hear us, right? The stories told in safety. That's how that really reflects to me. Create a space, a message from the past for the future. Your body remembers, listens, listen to its story. So this has lots of different meanings. That's why this one's, I'll read the spiritual meaning as well. Deep pain is transformed into wisdom and understanding, an inheritance, legacy or heirloom, having access to the tools and knowledge you need. Be gentle with who you were and strong about who you will become. I love that line. Be gentle with who you were and strong about who you will become. If you missed the reading I posted yesterday, I'm actually recording them at the same time. But the reading I posted yesterday was a queen of wands warrior energy rising into your sovereign warrior energy very focused on when your back has been up against a wall will you come out fighting will you stand up and fight again so if you missed that reading and this is kind of connecting into you to feel that by all means go have a look at that one as well but be gentle with who you were and strong about who you will become my favorite line of red all day and then the spiritual meaning says if you are feeling lost confused or asking what life is all about then it may be the perfect time to consult your original self. The one you keep hidden, you keep hidden while you grow up and supposedly wiser around it. The sweet, loving, innocent you is not lost. Deep down, you are still that person. The original you exists outside of time, safe and un uh, awaiting rediscovery. Hmm, interesting. I'm sort of struggling to read that message today. So take that as it connects for you, but this is about 
maybe rediscovering parts of yourself. Maybe there are parts within your shadow work journey that you need to rediscover past influences, influences that are still actually impacting you now. Focusing on, yes, having compassion and love and a gentle, like a gentle, tender lovingness towards that version of you that was, that made mistakes versus the person who you are standing in now and who you are becoming and who you want to become and how you desire to get there. So that can be challenging to create that version of self that is who you want to become with such strength and resolve within. What else do we need to see here? I'm going to keep this one a little bit shorter today because I feel like there's obviously a lot of deep dive questions in here, a lot of deep dive messages for everyone to sort of connect into. And this is why this is a practice versus a reading. So we're just going to get three final messages here with this deck. We have the four of stars. Loving this energy here with this chain around the feet, you know, wanting to arise, wanting to, to step into a new path, wanting to evolve and illuminate and awaken more and do all of those beautiful things, but still fixated on these past influences that are around here. Still fixated on the energy that you don't want to let go of. So this is normally like a hoarding energy. It can be, but this feels very, it's like you are still trying to move beyond where you like where you are still holding on to these old energies so are you willing to allow the old energies to be transmuted to be dissolved to be let go of are you willing to allow yourself to really own these parts of yourself and move forward in your journey don't hoard the past the past can't help you it can't it can't be changed it can't be solved it can't be fixed the past can simply be acknowledged and healing your fragmented self within that past awareness. But you can't do anything in the past. You can't change it. So are you still fixating and holding on to the past energy rather than focusing on your part in these experiences and how you can then move forward? Create stronger boundaries. Listen to that inner critic. Listen to that inner voice. Allow yourself to kind of go on a journey of rediscovering the, the past self and going into this future version of you. But let go of the energy that is like trying to keep you fixated in this 3D world and moving beyond that into more highly aligned energy. Okay, now we've got more. I only take drop cards. For those of you who don't know, I only take drop cards if I get one. Otherwise, it's just a bad shuffle. Okay, I got one. We have the chariot. This is our fast energy moving forward. I want to say it's taking charge of your life, taking charge of your journey, your story, your ability to be able to navigate these energies. This is about you taking that action, moving forward, finding more balance within so that you can charge ahead. I want to say charging into the great unknown. That's how it feels. It's like trust. It's almost so the message I'm receiving here with this with this is that trust that you are in the driver's seat. Absolutely. But this is our universal guidance. This is our, however you want to connect to that source guidance, spirit guides. I don't care what you want to label it. But can you trust as the person here, can you trust that they know where they're directing you? Can you forge your path into the great unknown, knowing that you are being guided? Even if it's scary, even if it's daunting, can you trust that you have the tools available but I really just do feel is like forging forward into that great unknown. And then we have one more. We have the Knight of Crystals coming through. And this for me feels like, oh, I'm really feeling a really interesting energy with this one. This one feels like there is a very strong, because this is a very fast action energy. New truth, new insights coming through. But the way I'm feeling this as well is it's almost like taking charge of those those beliefs and I'm going to just cut that shit out. I'm going to cut it out of my life. I don't want it anymore. Drawing that sword up and the imagery that I'm seeing with this, the Knight of Swords is a very interesting card for me because I, I will get lots of different messages with the Knight of Swords and I'm always receiving new messages with it and it's never always exactly what the Knight of Swords is meant to, sort of how it's meant to be read and I don't read the cards exactly as they're meant to be read. I read them intuitively anyway, but this is a beautiful expression and it's the first time I'm ever sort of feeling this today, but this is my sword here. This is the crystal energy here and charging ahead on your beautiful, you know, charging into the great unknown, but I'm going to draw that sword and I'm going to cut all of these threads, all of these cords. I will become the master 
energy that cuts this shit out of my life once and for all because I just don't need it. don't want it. Thank you very much. But you are going to become the knight of your own reality and take charge of that. That's how that feels for me today. So really, really interesting energy for that. And I'm just going to get one final energetic card, final energy card to support this journey. But I really do encourage with these journaling, meditation, go a little bit deeper into your own experience. And we have final message here is guardian. Guard your energy, very similar to the boundaries. So while you're going through these shifts, these different sort of energetic changes, while you are going through recreating boundaries and cutting that sort of, and this is for people specifically, because these two cards feel very aligned and this card's coming through as well. To say if you've got energetic leaks, if you have people that are still projecting sort of negative chords towards you in some capacity, you might have like that quote unquote evil eye energy being projected towards you. Be really, really firm in your boundaries. Be really, really firm in your protection energy. Continue to clear your energetic field. Close out any of those tears. Clear that debris. Really make sure that your energy is super aligned to your own... How's that word coming through? It's like your own sovereignty. It's always the word I kind of come back to, but it's almost like you're alchemizing right now all of these different energies, you're alchemizing your boundaries and your protective shield and your your personal energetic field and really learning how to become more masterful of that so that no one can then attach these, these energies towards you. And you also aren't going to then project them out either because you are way stronger in this energy. So take that as it resonates and connects. It's just a mini little practice to, to help support anyone who feels guided to it. For those of you who want to dive deeper into the shadow work journey, we do have a brand new live. I have not done a live shadow work journey for over two years. A live shadow work journey. We're doing six weeks together on Zoom plus an entire smorgasbord is the word that's coming through of meditations, activations, journaling, all of this stuff on our course portal as well. So each week you'll have so many different practices that you can do to support your shadow work journey. Um, this is the first time I'm doing it live for so long and I don't know if I'll ever do it live again. So last time I did it live, I thought I'd be always doing it live and it's taken two years. Um, I had to record a pre-recorded course instead to begin with. So some of you will feel more aligned to doing a pre-recorded course that doesn't have the live component. Others will feel more aligned to this. This is the deepest shadow work journey I've ever held and it's going to be life-changing for those who choose to come along on this journey with me. So if you feel guided to that, that will be at the top in the description box. Everything else is always listed below, including shadow work readings, one-on-one -on -one mentoring with me and anything else that may feel like your soul is calling it through. So take everything as it resonates and connects, sending you all an abundance of love and I will speak to you soon.